In today's session, our Chinese trainer, Ms. Bertina Su, she is uh, from Taiwan and will give you an introduction course on Chinese language. Let's welcome Su Laoshi, Ms. Bertina Su. 大家好。大家好。Good morning, my name is Bettina. I'm one of trainers from Shanghai. I'm so happy to see all of you in this trial class. Let me quickly introduce our school, school to you. Shanghai Language Studio is founded in 2010. We have more than 10 years of experience in teaching Chinese to non-native speakers. Our goal is to make our students to communicate confidently in both social and basic settings in a relatively short period. Therefore, we conduct effective and efficient teaching to ensure our students will be able to pronounce and recognize each word clearly and correctly. At the same time, our students will also equip themselves with adequate vocabulary and use basic Chinese grammar structure flexibly. So now may I ask, are you all learning Mandarin for the first time? They can tell me in the chat box. <laughs> wow. Sarah, Tommy, Lizzie, you are all learning Chinese for the first time. Wow, I believe the learning journey with us will be full of joy and make you feel confident when speaking Chinese anytime, anywhere. Okay. Okay. So now let's talk about the purpose of learning Mandarin. Well, from my teaching experience, I have some students who learn Chinese for the purpose of socializing with native speakers or taking the HSK proficiency test. In this case, when we conduct our classes, we will also share about the Chinese tradition and customs. Not only students can resonate with what they have learned from their book, it will also help students to expand their vocabulary. And if you learn Chinese for business purpose, we have professional teachers with business background. In business class, students can understand the way how Chinese people think. The business environment and business models in China. If you are interested in business course, we will have a trial class at 2.30 in this afternoon. Please contact us in the chat box and we will send you the Zoom link. So after a small introduction of the way we conduct our class, we will now get into the main topic, the beginner Chinese class for working adults, okay? Chinese is the only language in the world which combines two parts of art, the sound part and the symbol. As you can see, your, your left side is the sound part. Your right side is the symbol. We also call it pictogram, okay? So let's have a quick look of the phonetic part. We have our own pronunciation system. It's called pinyin. Now, pinyin is composed of three parts. As you can see, the initial, final, and the tone. So, it be, so in beginner Chinese class, we will spend time on building solid foundation and learning pinyin. Because learning pinyin is so much important. 
you need to use the simplified Chinese keyboard to type correctly on both phone or computer. Besides, Ping in will enable non-native speakers to pronounce authentically in Chinese. Okay, the second part is about the pictogram, how to recognize in characters. Chinese is a pictogram language. Each character is a symbol. As you can see on the right side, each character is a symbol. So according to the Comprehensive Modern Dictionary, there are over 20,000 characters in use. A well-educated Chinese person will know about 8,000 characters. However, there's a good news. For reading newspaper or watching news, you will only need around 2,000 characters. With 2,000 characters, it's already very adequate for you to live in China and fluently communicate with the native speakers. After finishing our class, you will be equipped with necessary words you need to communicate on a daily basis. Okay, so you can see pinyin and the recognizing characters, these two factors are equally important. None of them can be dispensable. Okay. In our beginner Chinese class, we will be using the HSK series to ensure our students will be able to pass the HSK Chinese proficiency test. At the same time, students will learn basic sentence structures and vocabularies. Once you have uh, finished these two books, you will have a concept of the Chinese language and fundamental cultural knowledge. And after the class, you can also flexibly use pinyin and recognize some very basic words, okay? Therefore, our beginner Chinese class is suitable for complete beginners who are interested in understanding the Chinese culture. But if you wish to express your idea and have basic communication ability with the native speakers, we recommend you finish the intermediate, which is HSK3 and HSK4 levels. Okay. So after a quick understanding of the course, now let's get into our trial class. In today's trial class, the first part, we will share our learning tip to you for recognize each Chinese character. And the second part is learning a very simple structure to say, I like something. Let's start from the first part. Uh, I believe most of you know how to say hello and thank yous in Chinese. Yes, hello in Chinese is ni hao. Thank you is xie xie ni. If I cover the characters and only left the pinyin for to you, you you will think, wow, it's so easy. I just need to uh, memorize. The N I H A O, which is ni hao, or X I E X I E, xie xie, thanks. But the characters is if I covered the pinyin, the characters is so hard to memorize, it's so hard to recognize it, right? But don't worry, in our beginner Chinese class, we will share the learning tips how to recognize each character. For you and later you will find 
learning the characters and recognize the characters is so easy. Okay, so let's start from the first fixed term. Ni hao. As you can see, ni hao, these two characters can be separate to four components. Let's start from the first one. Ni. You can see the yellow part, the left side. This part we call it the ren. This complement is modern Chinese, is a modern Chinese complement, means human being. And the right side, as you can see, the red part is the classical Chinese characters. It means you. So human beings and you combined together. A modern Chinese is ni, you. The second part, how, as you can see, the pink part, the pink one is woman, is a pregnant woman. The blue part is a child. We call it zi. The pink part, we call it nu. Okay. When a woman, when a pregnant woman with a child, in ancient China, people believe if a woman has a child, their life will become so much better. So how itself means well or good. So ni hao, ni hao, you well. Combined together, these two characters combined together becomes a fixed term. Say hello. But why you well means hello? Because I wish you well. I wish you well means hello in English. So ni hao, ni hao means hello. So it will be much easier for you to memorize these two characters, right? Ni, the left part is you. Hao, the right part is well and good. Ni hao, ni hao is a fixed term called hello. Okay, so this is the first part. The second part is xie. So you can see, share these characters. Okay. Good. Share these characters combined with three complement. Okay. Let's take a look of the middle one. The middle one, the blue part, we called it shen. Shen. Okay. Shen means a male person. A man, no? a male person, a man. The yellow part, we call it cun, which means an arrow, an arrow, okay? When a male person take the arrow going, going out for the hunting, okay? They will take the prey back home. And their wife, as you can see the pink part, the wife will kneel down and say thank you. Say the word thank you to the husband. So as you can see, xie means thick. A male person take an arrow going out for hunting and take the prey back home. And his wife say thank you to, the, to, his husband, uh, to her husband. So xie, these characters combine three complement. Pink part is the word, the word, okay? The word to say thank you. The blue part is body or the male person. And then the yellow part is arrow. Xie means thick. So on the road, if you, if you just want to say thanks to others, you just need to double the characters. You can say, xie xie, xie xie, xie xie, xie xie means thanks. If you want to say 
thank you, thank you with a U, then we need to combine with ni. Okay, 谢谢你，谢谢你 means thank you. Okay, 谢谢你 means thank you. Okay, let's take a look. Wow! So until now, you remembered three characters. The first one is ni, the second one is how, and the third one is xie. Okay. Can you tell me which one? Now let now let me give you a quick a small test, get a small quiz. Can you tell me which characters means you? Can you type your answer on the chat box? Is the green one or the red one or the blue one? Which one is? Yes, very so smart. Yes, it's the green part. How to recognize you in Chinese? Wow, so well done. Okay, then two more quiz for you. Can you tell me which color is xie? Xie, xie. Yes, the red one, correct. Wow. <laughs> Sorry to me, Jerry. Oh, well done. Well done. Wow, the red one is xie. Okay. Xie means thank. No? Thank. To thank. Xie. Okay, the last one. How? What is how? The yes, correct. The blue one. Well done. How? How? How means well or good. So now you know how to say hello in Chinese, and you can recognize the two characters. You well, the green one and the blue one. How do you say thank you? 谢谢你，谢谢你。Wow, correct. 你 is you. 谢 is thanks. How is good. So now we already learned how to recognize character easily. Now let's go to the second part of the trial class. We are going to learn how to say. To like, to like. I like you. I like Chinese. I like traveling. I like doing exercise. Oh, how to say I like in Chinese? Like combined with two characters, 喜欢 Okay, so you need to memorize. Oh, like is a fixed term. 喜 And Juan, 喜欢，喜欢。Okay, 喜欢 is a verb in Chinese. To like, 喜欢 So how can we make a sentence with 喜欢 Well, it is quite easy because in English is subject plus 喜欢 plus object, right? In Chinese. The sentence is the same. The sentence structure is the same. The first place of the sentence is subject, and we need to put 喜欢 directly after the subject, and we will put the object behind 喜欢 For example, I like you. I is 我 so I like you. In Chinese, we will say 我 a subject. 喜欢 is the verb. The object will be you. So 你我喜欢你 Good. 我喜欢你 is I like you. Now, if you already know to like the verb. Is 喜欢 in Chinese. Let's do some sentences. Okay. 
Wow, here we got puppy, 小狗 We got reading, 看书 We got exercising or do sport, 运动 Okay, 小狗 is puppy, the little dog, puppy, 小狗看书 reading. Wow. To read a book, 看 means to read, or to watch, or to look. 书 itself is book, so 看书看书 means reading. 运动运动运动 is a fixed term. 运 to move, 动 to move to move your body to do sport. To exercise, 运动 If you want, you can、uh, pronounce after me. Okay, 运动 Good, 运动 Okay, the second one, 看书看书 Okay, the first one, the little dog, the the puppy, 小狗小狗，小狗。Okay, reading. 看书。To exercise. 运动，运动。So do you still remember the the structure? I like da 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 da. <laughs> so I 我 like 喜欢。So now how do you say I like puppy? Do you like puppy? I personally like puppy the most. <laughs> I like puppy. In Chinese, is 我喜欢小狗。我喜欢小狗。我喜欢小狗。Correct. Wow, tell me. Pronunciation perfectly wonderful. 我喜欢小狗 Correct. I like puppy. The second one. How to say I like reading? 我喜欢看书我喜欢看书 Wow! So as you can see, what is the subject? 喜欢 verb. The object is 看书很好，很好。The third one, 运动，运动 to exercise. Do you like ex? Do you like exercise? I always like exercise because I want to keep clean. <laughs> 运动 Okay, 运动好 I like exercise. How do you say I like exercise? 我喜欢运动很好。我喜欢运动 Well done. So, 小狗看书运动 They are all object. In this sentence structure, okay. So, so now you know if you want to do the sentence with 喜欢 you can put the subject and object. Okay. So used to the object is will be a fixed term, but next page, the subject ah、uh, the object can also be a verb phrase. What is a verb phrase? It's like in English. For example, I like learning Chinese. Learning Chinese. Learn is the verb. Chinese is the object. So we call it learning Chinese as a verb phrase. So you can say learning Chinese. 学中文学中文，学中文
is a verb phrase. I like learning Chinese. 我喜欢学中文. Can you pronounce after me? 我喜欢学中文. Well done. 很好. So, with to like, 喜欢, behind 喜欢, we can not only put the object with a word, but also a verb phrase. So later in the, in the class, you can make a sentence by yourself. I like doing homework. <laughs> doing homework. No, doing homework is a very important thing. No? <laughs> or I like eating Chinese food. So you can put any verb phrase you want after si huan. Okay. Excellent. So this is the two parts of trial class. The first one is how to recognize the characters. Okay. Ni hao. Ni hao. And xie. Xie xie ni. Ni xie hao. And the second part is to like. How to make a sentence with to like. How to express you like something. Okay. Good. So we have come to the end of, of our trial class. Now we will open the floor for Q&A. Please feel free to ask if you have any questions. You can also type on the chat box or unmute yourself. Let me answer your question. Let me and Grace answer your question. Um, hi. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, uh, when I was a kid, I learned the Chinese before. But uh, it was the traditional Chinese, but I, I don't know it's the, the same, the Chinese, but it's been a long time ago. And also, uh, I, what actually I found the, the hard is to understand the, the, the intonations of how actually we say things. Like we have the, like, like this, then like that, and like that. They, I, I do see actually have the different intonations, right? And yeah, I think I find it like somewhat difficult to actually, because uh, I heard that if you say it wrongly, it's totally meaning a different word. Yes, correct. <laughs> the, the tone is important. Yeah. Um, uh, you said you learned, sorry. Yeah. Here. You said you learned tradi uh, traditional Chinese before, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm from Taiwan and Taiwan or in Hong Kong or in Macau, we all use traditional Chinese. So let me type some Chinese character. Uh, let me type the traditional one of 我喜欢. Let's take a look. 我喜欢. Okay. 学中文. So yes. as you can see, 我喜欢学中文. This part, wow, it's so complicated. <laughs> one and the 学. Correct. This one is traditional one. Mm. If you would like to travel in, if you would like to travel to Taiwan, Macau, or Hong Kong, or even Japan, in Japan, their kanji is traditional one. Mm. Yes, you need to have an understanding of the traditional one. Yeah. Uh, and the one you said, the tone, yes, from, from the, uh, the, second the second page, I said the pronunciation will be this one, okay, sorry, sorry, okay, this part, the tone, the initial, final, and the tones are very important, it's because you need to pronounce each character clearly and correctly, otherwise, uh, people will misunderstand you, 
So in our beginner Chinese class, we will share a tip for you to memorize the tone. Like for example, we can write down for the tone in Chinese, we got five tones. I hope you can see from here. Or let me share a new uh, a whiteboard for you. Let me explain the tone. Okay, whiteboard. Okay, okay sorry. Can you see the whiteboard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me share the whiteboard. Let me explain the tone. Okay, can you see the whiteboard now clearly? Good. In Chinese, we have five tones. The first one, the second one, the first one we will write like this, okay? The second one we will write like this. The third one is this. The fourth one is this. And the fifth one, we, will, we, we wouldn't write anything. Okay, let me, let me share a quick tip how to memorize the five tones in Chinese. Okay, actually in English, they also have tone. So I will, I will give you some example characters in English and let you memorize how to pronounce the tone. Okay. The first tone, let's start from the left part, this one. The first tone, I can, let me um, tell you a story. You can memorize this story to memorize this five tone. The first one is the first tone. If you go to the dentist, Okay, you sit on, on the, uh, the treatment chair and the dentist asks you, hey, to open your mouth and to make a sound. Ah, ah. So you can see, ah, the sound is always stay on a high pitch. So you can see if you got a book, you can see, the sound ah is always stand on a high pitch. Ah, ah, ah. So the first tone is you go to the dentist and the dentist asks you to open your mouth and make the sound. Ah, ah. Okay. And the second one is the dentist told, told you, Hey, you got five, you got five tastes which we need to do the treatment on. You got five broken tastes. And you are you are surprised. You said, what? What? I got five broken tastes? What? So what you can see when you pronounced what, you start your sound from the bottom to the high pitch. So it's the second tone. What? What? I got five broken teeth. What? So what? What is the second tone? What are uh, from the bottom to the high pitch? What? What? Okay. And the dentist tell you, do you want to do the treatment for the five broken teeth? And you answered, well, 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 I need to think. Five broken teeth. Well, well. So you can memorize the first one is to make your mouth open, called ah. The second one is what. The third one is well. Well, I need to think. Well, and the dentist told you, um, if you want to do the treatment, the five broken teeth will cost you six thousand American dollars. Six thousand American dollars. And you said, "Stop! 
No, I don't want to do the treatment. It's too expensive. Stop. Okay. Do you say stop when you're pronounced? Stop the ah. You can see from the high pitch and quickly with anger to the bottom. Ah, stop. So you can you can listen. Stop. Ah is from the top one to the bottom. But the third tone, well, you can find well is a little bit tricky. When you pronounce the well, you also got a tricky face. From the top one, quickly go to the bottom. And from bottom, go back to the high pitch. So the third one from my teaching experience, most students lay off. Um, it's not that easy for them to pronounce the third one. But try to memorize the third one. It's like an English characters. Well, well. Okay, so let's let's read. So let's do the story again. At the beginning, you go to the dentist, and the dentist tell you to open your mouth. The first tone, ah, ah. The second tone. The dentist said, oh, you got five broken teeth. You said, what? What? Ah, ah, the second tone. Okay, the first one, ah, second one, ah. Okay. The third one, well, do you want to do the treatment? Well, well, a little bit tricky, no? Well. Well, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, the first one, ah, uh, second one, ah, uh, what, ah, uh, the third one, well, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, the fourth one, stop. Stop, I don't want to spend 6,000 to do the uh, five tastes. Stop, stop, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's the, the most tricky tone, the first one to fourth one, because the fifth one is very easy. The fifth one, we set it as a neutral tone. You don't need to, you don't need to pronounce any ah, 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 just the, 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 the normal one, ah. You pronounce it quickly and make the sound quickly disappear. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so the first one to the fifth one, let's do it again. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, so this, uh, this is uh, one of the tips, uh, one of the tips we will teach our students how to uh, memorize the tone. Okay, I hope my answer um, is helped to me. <laughs> okay, any other question you may have? Uh, you're welcome for Kochi. <laughs> Uh, we got another two questions. Yes. I think I would like to answer first uh, Kain's question. Um, okay, she's got a question about um, simplified Chinese. So she's wondering if um, she's going to Taiwan, Hong Kong, uh, will they understand what you're writing? I think most of the words, because when we uh, compare the simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese, some of the words are exactly the same. Only a few words, uh, there are some differences between it. But I think in most of the cases, if you even you write the simplified Chinese, they're able to understand you. Yeah, because uh, in our class we teach, um, you know that if you go to Taiwan, um, besides Mandarin, they also speak other dialects, uh, quite similar to Singapore. And in Hong Kong, people speak Cantonese. So um, based on my personal experience, when I go to Hong Kong, I try to use English to communicate. 
then the communication failed because not everybody speaking English in Taiwan. But when I try to communicate in Mandarin, so I speak Mandarin, they reply in Cantonese. I understand some of their Cantonese and then we'll be able to communicate with each other. So I think it's not a, a problem, even though you go to Taiwan, especially in Taiwan. And then Hong Kong, uh, there are more people because Hong Kong now is a part of China. So more people, they started to learn Mandarin and speak Mandarin. So it should be no problem when it comes to communication. Yes. Uh, yes, Kain, would you like to, um, it, do, did I answer your question or you have further questions about that? Okay, sure, thank you. Okay, I have another question from Sarah. I, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. I think you ask a really good question to all of us. <laughs> uh you uh, okay sarah's question is about uh the difference between simplified and traditional chinese only in character what about the meaning and how to say it uh okay this is something very unique about uh chinese so when we say we can speak mandarin chinese that's actually really speaking so it's nothing to do with writing so when you say um i can speak chinese i can speak mandarin so Mandarin is a spoken Chinese. Okay, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, um, I'm from the northern part of China. If I have a friend who's from uh, Shanghai, I want to communicate with the person who's from Shanghai. So if that person does not speak Mandarin, the standard Chinese, and that person speaks dialect, which is Shanghainese. So when I talk to this person who speaks Shanghainese only, I will not understand him at all. But if I write what I want to express, it doesn't matter if there's people speaking Cantonese or speaking Shanghainese or speaking other dialects, we will have no problem to understand each other. So, so you can see the speaking system, the pronunciation is one thing. So that's why we introduced the uh, Han Yu Pinyin, which is the Chinese phonetic system. So that looks like when we learned the Ni Hao, the N I, then you spell together. So that looks like um, a romanized character, romanized letters. So it's quite similar to English. So that one we're talking about the speaking system. So when we talk, we use that. But why you probably wondering, since we can speak, why we need to write? If you have a friend, okay, if I have a friend who's from Korea, <laughs> Korea or Japan, though we cannot understand each other by speaking Mandarin, but if I write what I want to say, and the other person will understand. So the meaning is conveyed through the characters. So that's why in this lesson, particular lesson, we want to point it out how important it is to learn Chinese characters, the writing system. Yeah, because that's the essence of the language. If you just want to learn how to talk, it's very simple, I can guarantee you, um, within three months, you'll be able to talk. But the thing is that when you have a more vocabulary build up, and then you will realize the Chinese is very uh, highly contextual. Is everything is based on the context. If you only pronounce the word, like if you want to say, um, uh, how to say that, like uh, So if you only say I probably understand that as sleep or dumplings. So that has to be within the context. Then we will, people will understand what you're trying to say. And to be honest, uh, the reason that we are so care about teaching our students from the very beginning of Chinese characters is because that this is uh, really important. And you know, in China, when we say illiterate people, people who never have a formal education, they can speak Mandarin, no problem, but they cannot read and write Chinese characters. So we call these people as illiterate. So we don't want our students come to our studio to learn and then after three months, they can only say a few words and then become illiterate. So that's why we want to say like learning Chinese is not only the pinyin, the phonetic system, the writing is also important. So that part is really like helping you to uh, communicate with other people. For example, if you want to text a text message or you want to write something to your friend, we never use pinyin, the phonetic system to write. So that one was created that one was not original Chinese. That was created after 1949. The purpose is to help foreigners to learn Chinese faster. 
I hope I have answered the question. If you have further questions, feel free to ask or put it in the chat box. Thank you so much for uh, Grace. This. Okay, Sarah, did I answer your question or if you want to clarify anything with us? Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Any more questions? Okay, so the first step of learning Chinese uh, in our class, we always teach the uh, phonetics. So phonetics, uh, we use the Hanyu Pinyin uh, as a tool to teach uh, Mandarin Chinese. So when you master this um, phonetics, the Hanyu Pinyin, you'll be able, with the help of the Hanyu Pinyin, you'll be able to pronounce any Chinese characters. Yeah, then after that, uh, we gradually introduce, uh, introduce the character. So you don't have to worry about, like, uh, you must master the characters in one lesson or two lessons. And so it's a, re a repetitive process, even for the pinyin. So you got practice uh, every lesson, especially for beginners and beginners um, HSK one and two. Uh, by the way, HSK is the proficiency test, which is recognized worldwide. So after completing our courses, if you want to do the test in Singapore, uh, you can do it. If you want to go back to your own country and then attend the test, that's no problem at all. And the certificate you get is recognized worldwide. And if you finished our beginner, okay, if you okay, if you finished our beginner Chinese course, we will also give you a certificate with your attendance. Okay, so here, if you are interested in doing beginner Chinese class for working adults. Here is the course date. The date is on 10th August, 2021, uh, 2021 to 7th September. This is the beginner Chinese class level one. We are going to use the yellow book, as you can see on the screen. Yes, that one, the yellow book is for beginner Chinese uh, level one class. And the time will be from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, each Tuesday and Thursday. And it is a physical, a phys, uh, in physical classroom. In, in the classroom, we will teach this one in classroom. The location will be uh, near Dobby God. Okay, so it will be very convenient for you to take MRT or bus to, um, to our classroom. So this is uh, this course day will for is for your any one of you today. I believe all of you are just co member, right? So we're collaborating with uh, just co. So um, our office is also with just co. Do we go at the McDonald House? So for the physical class, if you're interested to attend the online classes, we have that option as well. And then we have a learning system. The learning management system is specially built up for our students who wants to take the online classes. Yeah, so any questions uh, about the learning Chinese? Even though you're not uh, attending our future classes, no problem. So uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Even if you want to do your self-study, uh, we can give you um, some suggestions like how to go on to continue to learn Chinese. Now there are many ways of learning. Like you can choose to attend the class or you want to do some of self-studies. But we do recommend uh, for beginners in order to, for you to get um, correct tones. So it's good that you have a teacher who can give you some like native speaker, a, um, a professional teacher who can give you some advice, especially for the pronunciation. That part is quite difficult for a beginner to do it by themselves. Okay, we're towards the end of our trial class today. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really hope I can see you in the class. Thank you guys. So it's time to say goodbye.
Hope we will see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again. Thank you. 谢谢你们。再见，谢谢，再见。谢谢。